Welcome to Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette, with your host, Steve Garrett, lifetime member of the National Corvette Museum, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 45 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette and the only current podcast dedicated to Corvette. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call them at 833-840-5334. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say, hey, Google, or Alexa, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. And be sure to visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetoday.com. You can access everything there, including the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also join our Corvette Today Facebook group there as well. Also, make sure you sign up for the Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And if you like YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our Corvette Today YouTube channel. See all Corvette Today episodes on YouTube as well. And be sure to patronize our flagship sponsors of Corvette Today, MidEngineCorvetteForum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at MidEngineCorvetteForum.com. Soul Performance Products, developed and manufactured in the United States, the Soul Performance Products exhaust portfolio has been tailored to elevate the experience of the world's most exciting sports cars, including the latest generation of the Corvette. Soul Performance Products at soulpp.com, the official performance exhaust of Corvette today. C8 Rally Driver is the one-stop shop for your C8 Corvette. Choose from custom-designed trunk and front covers, Z06 engine builder CNC plaques, customized wind restrictors, fluid caps, strut covers, rear hatch supports, and more. Everything is uniquely designed to provide you with custom accessories for your C8 Corvette. Visit their website at c8rallydriver.com and let your imagination run wild. That's c8rallydriver.com. Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an amazing value, starting at only $23.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And use the promo code CT111 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com, that's A-E-R-O-L-A-R-R-I.com, and use the promo code CT111 for your $100 discount. And a shout out to Canadian Corvette Forum and Corvette Forum, welcoming Corvette enthusiasts from around the world. My guest on today's show has a long career with General Motors and his relationship with Corvette spans over three decades. And he's intimately familiar with the L88 Corvettes too. We're going to talk about both on today's show. His name is Tom Hill. Tom, welcome to Corvette today. Hey, it's good to be here, Steve. Thanks for being on the show, Tom. First of all, let's talk about your years with General Motors. How many total years were you with GM? Well, I actually started in 1979 in St. Louis and worked through 2014, so it was almost 35 years Wow, working with Corvette. That's amazing. Now, let's talk about the jobs you had with GM over those years, because I know it took you to a few different places, didn't it? I got to be honest, I got to see all of General Motors. <laughs> like I say, I started in St. Louis. I was able to move to Bowling Green and help build that assembly plant and start up the new plant with the 1981 model Corvette. But then I took some other opportunities and moved to Detroit, worked at the Engineering Center in Warren. Okay. I also worked up in Detroit at the Milford Proving Grounds for a little while. Nice. Got involved with teaching technical problem solving to engineers. Try to teach an engineer something. I mean, there's a challenge. (laughs) That actually took me to just about every GM facility in North America. Wow. As well as I spent some time in Australia and I spent some time over at Rüsselsheim, Germany. Wow. With our European contingent. Man, that's amazing, Tom. Now, you alluded to going from St. Louis to Bowling Green. I'm kind of fascinated with how that transition went. Talk a little bit more about that, going from St. Louis to Bowling Green. 
Well, I started at St. Louis. Initially, they put me on the truck assembly line. Okay. And basically, I was building full-size trucks. I was an engineer. Every day I went to work and I said, I want to work on Corvette. And they said, Corvette's a dead end. (laughs) I said, you don't understand. I really have no interest in working for General Motors. I want to work for Corvette. I beat them down. And in three months, they had me moved over to Corvette. Three months later, they announced they were closing the plant. And I was on the initial team to help relocate the St. Louis facility and the process to Bowling Green. Wow. That had to be a real intensive process, wasn't it? You know, it's hard to believe. I look back on that. Do you realize in a year and a half, we took a vacated plant from Chrysler Corporation and turned it into a fully functional assembly plant and built our first Corvette? That's amazing. Just a year and a half, huh? year and a half. Yeah, it was phenomenal. I don't think you could do that today. I don't think so either. I think you're absolutely right. Now, when you retired, though, you were the Corvette quality control manager at Bowling Green, weren't you? Yeah, basically, I was the engineering manager for the product at Bowling Green. I like to describe my job as the guys in Detroit designed it, and they sent it to Bowling Green. And the guys in Bowling Green, the manufacturing people had to put it together. Yeah. Well, we were the team in between because we understood the design. We also understood the manufacturing. So we had to help them put it together in a higher level of quality. That was really our mission. I had 16 engineers working for me at the time. We were busy, but I think the fruits of our labor showed in the quality of the product. Absolutely. Did it go smoothly per se? Nothing goes smoothly at General Motors. (laughs) (laughs) Every day was different. There was always a challenge. It was always something new. But I got to say this, the majority of the people that work at Corvette, whether it's in Bowling Green or Detroit, love Corvette. So it was a passionate position to be in for most of the employees. When you had problems, you could get through it. It wasn't as bad because of the passion that was around the product. It has to be a monumental task. And kudos to you and your team for getting that move done from St. Louis to Bowling Green. Yeah, that was the big deal. It really was. I look back on that, and I remember when we moved to Bowling Green, we trained all these people from Kentucky, Bowling Green specifically, because we didn't think anybody from St. Louis would want to move to Bowling Green, Kentucky. I mean, why would I leave my family and do that? Right. Well, the thing we didn't know is that they announced that they were closing the St. Louis plant. So everybody from St. Louis moved to Bowling Green. No kidding. (laughs) They were all transplants. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. That has obviously changed since then, but that group that came, and Corvette was primarily the low seniority UAW people. But those people that moved from St. Louis to Bowling Green literally spent the rest of their career in Bowling Green. So it took about 25 years before that last person from St. Louis retired. That's amazing. Well, Tom, let's take our first break. And when we come back in segment number two, you know, I alluded to you're intimately aware of the L88 Corvettes. Let's talk about that more coming up next here on Corvette Today. We all know that wheels make the car. Wheelcraft's PVD chrome finish in bright chrome or black chrome will take your Corvette to new levels. And it comes with a five-year warranty. Durability is a defining feature of the Wheelcraft finish. Their PVD chrome is superior to traditional chrome with a finish that is brake dust resistant and cleans effortlessly with soap and water. Wheelcraft offers factory wheel exchange for select C4 through C8 models, or they can apply the PVD finish to your current wheels. No matter what generation you own, Wheelcraft will transform the look of your Corvette. With every Corvette comes a unique story, and Wheelcraft has embraced this idea. When you purchase your new set of wheels, you receive a lifetime membership to the Wheelcraft pit crew, granting you access to your own page on Wheelcraft's website, where you can post pictures and tell your Corvette story. Visit our website at wheelcraft.com. Or call 833-639-4231. Arrive in style with Wheelcraft. Hi, I'm Phil Pataki with Car Capital. Our new signature model comes with a carbon fiber look floor with double stitching and zipper pulls for easy up and down, easy access. We have our LED light kit with a remote control. And of course, we have the IntelliCharger that actually integrates with this car and many other cars. We preserve and protect and present the finest vehicles in the world, and yours is next. Check us out at carcapsule.com. 
The Radiator Grill Store offers protection for your C8's front radiators and side intakes. They also carry front strut tower covers to prevent rusting and pooling water, all with do-it-yourself installation. Get 10% off your total purchase with promo code CT10. See the full line of products at radiatorgrillstore.com. Are you ready to take your Corvette to the next level? Look no further than Classic Trim Customs. We've manufactured some of the most impressive Corvette parts on the market, from engine bay panels to splitters and side skirts. With over 30 years of experience in hydrographics, we've perfected the technique and use only state-of-the-art materials and equipment to ensure the highest quality and precision. Visit our website at ClassicTrimCustoms.com or give us a call at 305-258-3090 to learn more about our products and services. Whether you want to create a show-stopping ride or just add a touch of personalization, the sky is the limit with Classic Trim Customs. Let us help you create the Corvette of your dreams. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Thanks for checking out Corvette Today on podcast and YouTube. It's the only current podcast dedicated to Corvette. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. You want your Corvette looking its best? Well, dress it up with bright chrome or black chrome wheels. Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or do a wheel exchange, and you get a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com or give them a call, 833-639-4231. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is former GM exec Tom Hill. Tom has got an L88 that just sold at the Mecham auction that is pretty doggone legendary. Tom, this is a rare car. So first off, how did you acquire it? How long have you had it? And why did you sell it? Well, here's the rest of the story. In 2014, I ended my career with General Motors. I retired because I had another opportunity. I moved to Windermere, Florida, which is just outside Orlando, and I currently manage a private car collection. Oh. In January of 2014, we made a trip to Barrett Jackson out in Scottsdale, Arizona. And that was the day that we bought the 1967 L88 Corvette, and we added it to the collection. At that point, I thought I knew a lot about L88, huh. but you don't really learn about these cars until you have one. So I went to town doing the research to find out everything I could about these cars. For the past 10 years, I have had the luxury of being able to share that car with Corvette people at many different car events. Not just Corvette events, but just regular Concours events. Nice. It's been a wonderful car. I really am sad to see that car leave the collection. Like every collection, you got to keep rotating the inventory and keep it interesting. I understand that. That's for sure. Let's talk about the rarity of this L88 because I know there's a laundry list of stuff that makes it a one of one, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The big standout on this car is the fact that it's a red car. On top of that, it's got a red interior. Of the 2067 L88s that were built, there was only one that was red with a red interior. There's another thing that most people don't think about, but this particular car is an L88 with a 456 rear axle ratio. Oh, And most Corvette people don't even realize that they even offer a 456 rear axle ratio. And there's a reason for that. In 1967, only five cars had it. Wow. The only reason that you would get a 456 rear axle ratio is you were going to the drag strip. Definitely. This particular car didn't necessarily go to the drag strip. It actually was delivered to Birmingham, Michigan. I actually lived in Birmingham, Michigan, about a mile from this dealership when I worked at the engineering center. If you were going to buy a 1967 L88 with a 456 rear axle ratio and you lived in Birmingham, Michigan, I know exactly where this car was headed. Woodward Avenue. Yes. Because it was going to go out to Woodward Avenue, and that's where it was probably going to spend most of its energy trying to beat Fords and Chryslers and all the other hot rods of the day. Definitely. Let's talk about the legend of the L88 engine, because like you said, there was only 20 of those cars built in 1967, and a lot of people might not know about L88 engines, but give us an overview of why these cars are so special. It's interesting. The 1963 Z06 was a factory-based race car, and they did that in 1963, and then they stopped, and they didn't do it again until 1967 when they brought out the L88 package. Now, the L88 package is not a car package. 
It's an engine. Right. However, you could not get it without getting all the other extras to go with it. So an L88 was 950 bucks. But you had to spend another $700 to get brakes, suspension, radio delete, several other things that were required. So by the time you got all done, you had about $1,600 invested in this car. Wow. What's interesting to me is they derated the car. They rated it at 430 horsepower, so no one would buy the car because they wanted this to be a target audience that was specifically focused towards automotive racers, people that would go out and compete with the car. I think they kind of shot themselves in the foot in the fact that they only built 20 cars. Right. They hit it so well that no one found it. And the actual horsepower is really about 650, wasn't it? Well, it's like five, five and a half. Okay. Depending upon the tune of the car. Yeah. This was basically a 427 cubic inch, four bolt main, cast iron, big block engine, but it had aluminum heads on it with 12 and a half to one compression. So you basically got the seven liter or 427 cubic inch displacement with the weight of a small block. That was really a big deal. But the other thing that's hidden in there is this car used a lightweight flywheel. The reason they put the lightweight flywheel on there is that the engine was more responsive. The problem with a lightweight flywheel, it's also easier to blow up. Oh. And that's exactly why a lot of these engines didn't survive. And in fact, this particular car, what do you think happened with a 427 L88 with a 456 rear axle ratio? It was racing almost all of its life, I bet. You bet. And they demolished the block. So this has a replacement block that is a period correct block for the car, but not the original one with the car. I'd say of the 16 remaining cars, there's 16 of the 20 that still exist. I'd say probably half of them, maybe less than that, still have their original engine. Oh, yeah. Nobody thought these things were going to be collectible. They thought they were just hot rods from the factory. Right. That's amazing. (laughs) Gosh. So the extra $1,500 that it took to get the L88 engine, that's really like $13,000 in today's money, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm looking at the sticker for this car, and it was $6,105.30. Which was a lot of money in 1967. That was a lot of money. Yeah, when you consider the base price, the car was $4,300. Talk about the awards that this L88 has won, Tom. First, I want to give credit to the neighbor brothers down in Houston, Texas, that saved this car. It was an old, worn-out drag car, if you would, street racer. Mm -hmm. Someone discovered what it was. They got it to the neighbor brothers in Houston, and they completely redid the car. The car is absolutely stunning in its restoration. Basically won all the awards. It's got the Bloomington Gold Certification, NCRS Top Flight Awards, but most importantly, it's got the Dunto Mark of Excellence Award. Wow. And it gets invited to everything because a 67 L88, a red one, I mean, if you're putting on a car event, especially a Corvette event, that car will always be invited to come. Yeah. Because it's so special. That's amazing. Well, Tom, let's take our final break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the driving experience of an L88 Corvette coming up next here on Corvette Today. Are you ready for a better insurance policy without the Corvette tax? With agreed value protection, the value of your collector vehicle will never change. Plus, you'll save money. Get a quick quote at ncminsurance.com. Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up there. At True Wealth & Company, we take that to heart. See, at True Wealth & Company, we believe your retirement lifestyle travels through two doors. Door number one, the blue door, gives you more options, financial freedom. Your money outlives you. Every happiness you wish for in life is through the blue door. Door number two, the red door, is where you outlive your money. You rely on family, friends, or even the state to take care of you. At True Wealth & Company, we're not just financial planners. The best way to walk through the blue door is to have a written plan. Make a work-optional lifestyle a reality with our proprietary True Life Map formula. Look towards your future with anticipation, not apprehension. Having a rock-solid fiduciary partner like True Wealth & Company is essential to effective financial planning. There's no winging it. There's nothing left to chance. Look, we don't want you to become another Yogi Berraism. Give us a call today at 913-653-TRUE. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Start your financial independence and work optional lifestyle today. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth & Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. When you want to buy a Corvette, or any Chevrolet for that matter, get yours from Hendrick Chevrolet Shawnee Mission located in Kansas City. Hendrick Chevrolet is the largest Corvette dealership and showroom in the Midwest 
With a knowledgeable sales staff and Corvette sales specialists on hand, they'll help you build the Corvette of your dreams, and they ship nationwide. With Corvette certified master mechanics on site and a huge parts department with over 24,000 parts and $2 million in inventory, Hendrick Chevrolet is well equipped to take care of your every need. From sales to service to collision repair, Hendrick Chevrolet has you covered. Visit ChevyUSA.com or call 913-384-1550. VetFinders.com is the Internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified ads starting at just $25. And every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. You're enjoying the only current podcast on Corvettes, Corvette Today. Thanks for listening and watching Corvette Today, the show that talks about everything Corvette. Corvette Today is brought to you by Wheelcraft. You want your Corvette looking its best, right? Well, dress it up with bright chrome or black chrome wheels. Visit wheelcraft.com and learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or do a wheel exchange, and you get a five-year warranty. So visit wheelcraft.com today or give them a call, 833 833- Six three nine four two three one. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me is Tom Hill, Corvette's former quality control manager at Bowling Green. In this final segment, we've been talking L88. We're going to talk about the driving experience of an L88. Tom, when you start this car up, the exhaust note is like no other. Isn't that right? That's true. In fact, this is an under-the-car exhaust. A lot of people love the side exhaust. I personally love the side exhaust. I love the way they look. This is an open exhaust system, which was the off-road exhaust system that was available with these cars. And it's got a different note. But what you really notice is the engine's just a little bit noisier because it's a solid lifter big block. Hmm. And they typically make that little clattering noise that initially you think something's wrong and then you realize, oh, no, that's something good. (laughs) It's just getting warmed up, isn't it? Absolutely. And we talked about this a little earlier in segment number two, but the horsepower was greatly understated, wasn't it? It was. It was. They did that intentionally. I mean, it's probably between 500 and 550 horsepower. It's relatively radical camshaft in the car. Once it's warmed up and it sits there and idle, it'll rock the car back and forth on that camshaft. Wow. That sounds like fun, though. I mean, if it's rocking, it sounds like a good time, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's just waiting to pounce. And speaking of waiting to pop, if you don't get this car running and moving, it overheats, doesn't it? Yeah, it was intended to be a race car. It was not intended to be a street car. So when they do that, they remove things from the car that you need for the street, but you don't necessarily want on a racetrack. And probably the most significant thing is the fan shroud. That fan's in there to help pull air across the radiator. And when you take the shroud away, it's not pulling air from the radiator. It's pulling it from everywhere. So if the car sits in idles for very long, it's definitely going to overheat. In addition to that, they put a smaller radiator in the car. It has the small block radiator, so it's not even as much capacity as what the big block would have. But they did that because you don't want extra weight in the car. You don't need that. And as long as the car's moving, you're just fine. Now, this thing has no power steering and some other deletes as well, doesn't it? Well, yeah, there's no power steering in the car. With the thin tires that they had back then, it didn't really matter that much. Again, at speed, you don't need power steering. Right. It also doesn't have a radio and doesn't have a heater. You couldn't get a heater with an L88. (laughs) Again, you don't need a heater when you're on the racetrack. Exactly. (laughs) You're going to drive it on the street. Might want to have that. The other noise that you get when you're driving the car is this grinding noise coming from the tunnel. Huh. That is because these cars, and actually only the 20 L88s in 1967, had the M22 manual transmission. The M22 manual transmission makes noise because it has the hardened square cut gears in it, which are stronger, but they're noisy. Yeah. So they got the name Rock Crusher, but it's because of the noise from these gears basically coming around and smashing against each other. Once you realize what it is, again, it's one of those great noises. And there's the legend and the story of the Rock Crusher rear end, isn't it? 
Yeah, the rear axle, these cars required that you had to have posi traction. And most of them got 411 rear axles. I think I mentioned earlier that this car has got a 456 axle. So right. this was a real tire smoker. Yeah, absolutely right. And you talked about the restoration of this car, but you've got full documentation too, don't you? Yeah. In fact, let me tell you just a little bit about the restoration. The neighbor bros, I mean, they did everything to the extreme on this car to make sure that it was right. They've done a lot of mid-years. That's what they're famous for. One of the things they did, they sprayed this car in lacquer. And so it still has that lacquer that is now gone on 30 years old. Wow. It still looks great. In fact, it's one of the things that the judges don't like because it's too shiny it doesn't look as crappy as it did when it came out of the plant. As a quality manager, I'm offended by that. Right. You know, our goal at Bowling Green was to make the cars so good you can't over-restore them. But not back in 1967 in St. Louis. I always referred to it as a loved lacquer paint job. In other words, the owner has polished this car over the years and made it smooth. So it doesn't have the dry spray on it that it would have originally had. Yeah. That's the only thing the judges can find fault with. Everything else in the car is fantastic. One little detail. This is kind of that little insider thing. The car has J56 brakes. Everybody, when they hear of J56 brakes, they go, oh, that's the one with the front calipers that have two pins in them instead of the one center pin. That's true. What people don't realize is that the master brake cylinder on a J56 car is unique. And it's unique in the fact the part number that is cast into the brake housing is upside down on a J56 model. Hmm. It's the same part number on a power brake car as it is on a J56, except on that car, it's right side up. That's interesting. I don't know why they did that. All I know is they did. <laughs> That's, how about that? And also, you've got documentation like the build sheet and the tank sticker, too. Yeah, 67 was the first year that the tank sticker went into place, and a lot of people don't realize why they did that. I'll tell you exactly why they did it. They did it because they were misbuilding too many cars in St. Louis, and so down the chassis line with numerous combinations of engines and transmissions and suspensions, they decided to put an identifier on the cars and went down the line so they could double check and make sure the car was built right. 1967 was the first year they did that, I have the actual sticker that came off of this car that identifies everything about the suspension, the engine, and basically the build of that particular vehicle. Wow, that's amazing. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to be on Corvette today. I would love to see this L88 sometime. Well, hopefully you can hear it. That's the best part. Seeing it's pretty good, but hearing it is the true joy. Thanks again for listening and watching Corvette Today. And be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today show. And thanks to our sponsors, Wheelcraft. Want to dress up your Corvette with bright chrome or black chrome wheels? Visit wheelcraft.com to learn about their advanced PVD chrome finishing. They can refinish your wheels or offer a wheel exchange for most models, and it comes with a five-year warranty. Visit wheelcraft.com today or call 833-840-5334. Soul Performance Products at Soul P. P.com, the official exhaust of Corvette today. True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels. Get $100 off your purchase with the new promo code CT111 at Aerolari.com. And Hendrick Chevrolet in Kansas City at ChevyUSA.com. Thanks for checking out Corvette today on podcast and YouTube. If you'd like to contact Steve with ideas for Corvette today, you can email him at stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. That's stevegarrettdj at gmail.com. Also, sign up for email notifications at corvettetoday.ck.page. Follow Steve and the show on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and threads at stevegarrettdj. Thanks again for listening and watching Corvette Today.